Unity just came out with their finalized pricing plan after being berated on the internet for a week for their carelessly thought out initial plan to charge developers a flat fee once someone installs their game on a new device. This coupled with subscription changes, no ceiling cap on how much fees they can take, changing terms of service rules, applying these new rules retroactively to games made even prior to 2024, along with many other ridiculous clauses, resulted in a recipe for disaster and caused thousands of developers and studios to speak out against Unity and demand change, including myself. Well, the change is here, and it seems they listen. In the new changes, the runtime fee does not apply to the Unity personal plan. It's only when you start to make $200,000 or more do you have to upgrade to the Pro plan, which is around $2,040 per year per seat. This does not include the runtime fee. Now you only start to pay the runtime fee when you have over $1 million in revenue per year and also have over 1 million engagements, which I'll explore what that means in a bit. They added this calculator on their website that shows you how much they'll deduct depending on your revenue and engagements. What I really like about this new plan is that now there's a ceiling to how much they can take. The maximum is 2.5%. Before that, there was no cap. And in certain edge cases, a studio could potentially be bankrupted because of these runtime fees. So it's probably better to go with the flat rate, which I'll display the pricings here on the screen, because it could be lower than the 2.5% royalty, and they'll never charge you more than that 2.5%. I think this is a much better model than the one a week and a half ago, because now there's much more leeway for indie developers. There's a ceiling cap on how much they can take, and it's still less than Unreal's 5% after 1 million in revenue. But I'm still not a huge fan because it's just a little bit too complicated for me. You know, we have the seats we have to take into account. Now we have a fee and also we have a royalty. Now you can choose either the flat fee or the royalty, but it's just a lot of stuff as for engagements before they were saying that this fee would apply to each new installation of the game on a device which was very vague this led to a lot of questions like how will this be tracked will the developer be charged twice for the same user and how will streaming services or web gl applications be affected with this new fee they've clarified that point quite a bit and you'll only be charged the fee if you meet the requirements and per engagement they define an engagement as the moment that a distinct end user successfully and legitimately acquires, downloads, or engages with a game powered by the Unity runtime, or the first time in a distribution channel. It's a little confusing, but let's give an example. In Steam, every time someone purchases that game, that would count towards that runtime fee, even if they don't play it. And they've provided more clarifications to make it clear that they'll only charge per new person per platform. In the previous report, they had stated that they were going to use a proprietary model to track installations, which was a little worrying considering their $4.4 billion requirement of Iron Source. So many people were worried that this would equate to a sort of spyware that would run on the device to track how many installations were made. But now Unity has clarified that now all of these statistics will actually be self-reported. So it will be up to you to tell Unity how much revenue you make and how much engagements you have. And it's basically like a trust of faith. So there will be no spyware, nothing being shipped with your game to track your installations. Actually, that wasn't even mentioned the first time around. It seems that as a community, we kind of just assumed that because the details were super vague, but there was none of that to begin with. As for WebGL games, streaming services, subscription services, it seems like this runtime fee will be applied to them. However, the FAQ is a little vague. It's just kind of like a yes and it doesn't provide any clarification, which I wish they had, because I'm wondering how will we track a unique user on a WebGL application when it's just running on a website and someone can just load it up. And their most controversial change last week was that this new fee would apply to games made prior to the fee start date, which was January 1st, 2024. So it was kind of like a retroactive fee in a way. And a lot of people were obviously very upset with this because when they made a game with Unity, they didn't sign up for a fee and all of these games that were already published would have to start paying this fee if they met those requirements, which I don't even know if that's lawful or against the law. Luckily, now these changes will only apply to the 2023 LTS and forward, so no more retroactive changes. Once you use that editor version, you will have to basically agree to those changes and agree to pay those fees once you meet those requirements. They've also clarified that the terms of services will stay the same per version of the editor that you are using so that in the future they can't just 
up and about remove some of the terms of services that we had agreed to prior which was also a big reason why a lot of us stopped trusting unity last week they've also kept the unity plus subscription tier removed which a lot of people were on it because they didn't like the made with unity splash screen that displayed at the start of the game which became synonymous with some asset flip games and just had a negative view overall but now they made it optional even in the personals here so it's completely free to remove however this change will only apply in the 2023 lts and further so you will have to accept the new terms of services that new runtime fee and the new royalty if you want to remove that splash screen which i thought was a funny choice <laughs> they also removed the rule that you only have three days to use the editor without internet before essentially being locked out of the editor now they reverted it back to the 30 days which i think is what they had before and this only applies to the personal tier which is free i think these changes are a big win for developers compared to what they released a week and a half ago thousands of developers and studios stood against unity and demanded change for this outrageous rule especially the retroactive rule and many even decided to switch engines so if there's one good thing that came out of this is that the whole game development world literally united against unity <laughs> so it shows that we do have power and that we can vote against an action of a company by using our own actions and words for the record i'm totally fine paying unity a fee especially i've been using it for free this whole time i've been using it to make so many projects and i haven't had to pay anything they have a ton of great features it's easy to prototype stuff with c sharp and i like that there's now a high threshold before they start to charge you anything and i think a 2.5 royalty cut is more than fair I think we should be taking a closer look at Apple and Steam as well and seeing why they take 30% when we are developing the game and all they're doing is hosting it on their platform. I think that is essentially highway robbery. I think a change in the fee would have been received negatively either way, but the way they handled it was very, very immature. It was not professional whatsoever. It was not well thought out. It caused mass panic on the internet for a week and a half caused thousands of developers and studios to change their plans and really it was such a bad move not well thought out they lost the trust of almost all of their user base in less than one day and that for me is just plain disrespectful even the employees themselves seemed to be against this change but it was still pushed out so for me the problems i see are the leadership communication within the company between the product teams and also a clear disconnect between the indie developers the studios and what the company wants ever since they've ipo'd they've made a lot of questionable decisions such as acquiring iron source for 4.4 billion dollars amid massive layoffs canceling their flagship game gagaya and also branching out a lot to different sectors such as xr ai blockchain etc while a lot of the core engine features are still riddled with bugs that have been there for several years I also think they didn't really think this change out through completely and that they weren't expecting this type of response. So they need to win our trust back slowly, especially over the next several years. They need to be very careful on their every move. It seems they'll be updating their terms of services on GitHub so we can see the history of changes. However, there needs to be just more than that. Internal teams need to be more connected. Vital bugs need to be fixed. They need to figure out their three render pipeline situations, which is a hassle to switch from one to the other. And if you're an asset developer, you need to account for all of them. And they also need to integrate vital features into the Unity engine, such as integrating the new input system, which has been out for a long time now in lieu of the old one and much more. And a lot of people were asking, well, how do we know that they won't do this again in the future? And in summary, we can't 100% be sure of anything. But they said they would display the TOS changes, the terms of service changes on GitHub, which is a start. And they saw how the community reacted and how powerful we can be with our actions. And hopefully they took this as a lesson. However, the trust is still broken. But I also want to remind you that a company is a company. So companies are trying to stay afloat financially. So we also have to keep this in mind. Unity and all the companies will always be putting their financial assessment first because that's what keeps them afloat and alive. And for me, if you saw my previous video, I essentially said goodbye to Unity. I had cut ties with them. I canceled the sponsorship that I was currently doing with them. I had said I wasn't going to Unite. I said I was switching engines. 
and I did make these decisions based on their prior rules and also I want to mention that emotions were running high during this week and a half. I was very disappointed in them and I still am however with these new changes it's apparent that they're at least somewhat listening to us and I'm hopeful that they'll continue to listen to us. I really like Unity as a game engine. The community is just wonderful. I know so many awesome content creators. They've also sponsored me so much, which no other game engine has. Well, obviously, because I don't use another game engine. <laughs> so I'm opening my communication back with Unity. I'm still being apprehensive. I won't be doing that sponsorship that I had canceled with them, um, but I do plan on attending Unite mostly because I do want to connect with the other content creators, which is the most valuable thing for me. I always enjoy meeting the other YouTubers. And I'm also very curious how they will address this whole debacle at Unite, what they have in store for us in the future. I also keep learning Godot and Unreal to keep my options open. It's always good to know a variety of tools and engines. They all have their pros and cons, and I'll be analyzing which one to use per specific use case, which one makes sense. I'd love to hear your thoughts. It's a first step, but myself and others are still very apprehensive and they do need to work a lot on winning back our trust as developers. Thank you guys for supporting me and I have some awesome videos in store for you coming soon.